And I tell you something. Every time you think you're going through a problem, there are people not too far from you who are going through a bigger problem. But they are probably just a little bit more easygoing than you because they have managed it and coped with it by the help of Allah. So if you turn to Allah, he will make your negativity simple for you. It becomes a positive. If you lost a job or you suffered in your health or for example, you suffered in your family or you lost a loved one or you have a major issue this way, that way. If that particular negative item brought you closer to Allah, wallahi, it was a gift of Allah. If at a point you were sinning and you were sinning and you were sinning and you didn't even have Allah in your equation because you were young and bubbling, bursting with energies, who is going to stop me? And you kept on sinning and sinning until one day something happened and it had to come to an abrupt stop and you stopped sinning. And then there came a time when you shed a tear to Allah and you said, Oh Allah, help me. Imagine you haven't yet asked forgiveness of Allah, but because your life has come or has turned upside down, you're asking Allah to turn it the right way round again. Was that not Allah's favor upon you that you stopped the sin at least? Should you not seek the forgiveness of Allah, clear the slate? It's not difficult, my brothers, my sisters, to clean your slate here and now. No matter what you've done on earth, you can clean the slate here and now by the will of Allah. The only problem is when you have taken from the rights of a fellow human being, you're going to have to make peace with them. You're going to have to go and sort the matter out. You can't say, oh, wow, I just stole a million quid from this guy and I can clean my slate here and now. That's what I was told. No, you must go and return the money. Or if that person is generous enough and you tell them, listen, bro, I pinched a million from you. He said, nah, it's okay, minor, it's okay. So you're forgiven. <laughs> Whoa, subhanallah. I don't think that would happen even if he's a trillionaire. He'd say, hey, hey, you pay back every penny. And then you, you think to yourself, why did I even tell him? He didn't even know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. The point I'm raising is between you and Allah, you clear the slate here and now. Oh Allah, forgive us. We don't want to sin. We won't sin. We regret what we've done. We will not do it again. We seek your forgiveness. Help us through the path. Make us strong. There is no point in sinning. Do you know, you feel like a fool when you grow a little bit older and you start looking back and thinking when I had my energies, you know, I just wasted them in all nonsense. And for that reason, the same hadith I spoke about that mentions a person whose heart is hanging in the masjid or connected to the masjid makes mention of another person, Shabun. A young person, male or female, who grew up in that youth and the young age, you know, the teenage and slightly beyond in the obedience of Allah. In the obedience of Allah, when you're young and you want to be a little bit outrageous, mostly to be noticed, to be noticed, to be this way, that way. Allah says, you calm down, calm down. Whatever you do, don't do the wrong thing. The best gift that you could give yourself at that point is to have good friends, a lovely circle. When you have a beautiful circle around you, automatically you'll be doing the right thing. You won't be doing the wrong thing. Imagine you're cruising with your friends. Time for salah. They want to pray. You're not so keen. What will happen? Because of the virtue of the people around you, you end up praying. I had good guys with me. But if you're a person who prays, and then you're cruising with people who don't pray and there are a lot of them. What will happen? Shaitan might come to you and make you feel embarrassed of worshipping your Lord. Subhanallah. So you're quiet about it. You haven't mentioned prayer and you're just okay with it. And you, the time passed and what happened? You didn't pray. Why? Because all your friends didn't pray either. So my brothers, my sisters, Ramadan round the corner. We said, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Make some plan for the month of Ramadan. What would you like to do? Check the lessons. Do something. Use the time to benefit yourself, to come closer to Allah. Allah. <laughs> 
For a limited number of days, Allah says, we want you to achieve taqwa. Therefore, we have made compulsory the fast. Because we want you to achieve the consciousness of Allah. To improve your relationship with Allah. When you exit the month of Ramadan, you must be a better person. And I can tell you, one year will be your last Ramadan. Do you know which year that's going to be? Anyone know? No one knows. One year. Maybe last year was already your final Ramadan. Who knows? I might not see Ramadan. I might not. You may not. Who knows? How many people you ask about them? It's happened to me. How's that brother? Say, he passed away. He said, when? He passed away six months ago. You don't know? No. Rahmatullahi alayhi. Before you know it, your name will fly around in the same way. And so will mine. I'm not depressed about it, but I'm just hopeful in the mercy of Allah. Because I have no option. But at the same time, I lead my life. Where I faltered, I seek forgiveness. And where I am accepted by Allah to do good, I don't become arrogant. I thank Allah, but still greet the people, talk to them. You know, mashallah, spend a bit of time with the people. Serve the people, especially those who are underprivileged. The Prophet wasallam has told us to serve those who have, struck, who have been struck with calamity, disaster. Those who don't have the homeless, the orphans, perhaps the widows, whoever else it may be, the poor, the wayfarer, the one on the streets. You see a person on the streets, homeless. A lot of the times people look at them and don't even acknowledge that's a human. Have you ever bothered to greet a homeless person? Do you know they will look forward to seeing you every single day simply because you made them feel like a human? Do you know that? You see a homeless person, you just smile at them and keep going, even if it's not a proper greeting as such. But you made a difference. You see? No matter who you are, you could be a CEO of a company. What's the big deal? In Allah's eyes, will you come on the day of Qiyamah and say, I was the CEO of that company. We had a portfolio of uh, worth more than 30 million. You know, that's irrelevant to Allah. Nothing, zero. That was your dunya. That was your worldly life. It had nothing to do with the hereafter unless you converted it into good deeds. Because on that day, what will benefit you? Your deeds. You can't come to Allah and say, I was a tall basketball player. I was really good at it, man. If you use that in order to earn the pleasure of Allah, no problem. It's not haram. I mean, it's okay. You can be a sports person. You can be anyone else. You can be doing so many things, but do not do that compromising your relationship with Allah. May Allah Almighty grant us ease and goodness. I am looking forward to a brilliant Ramadan. I'm looking forward to a Ramadan where I can change my own life to do more than what I'm doing right now. May Allah help us all to do more. Do you know one of the biggest diseases that we have? We overlook those whom Allah has chosen without a say from us to be close to us in relation. Look at the Quran. Allah Almighty clearly speaks of the will qurba so many times. Allah says, give your relatives their due. And give the masakin, the poor people their due. And give Ibn Sabil. Ibn Sabil means a son of the, of, of the road, of the path. The wayfarer. Those who are downtrodden, give them their due. It starts off with your relatives. Who are your relatives? Your parents, your children, your siblings, and then your spouse. Subhanallah. Be kind to them. That's the least you could do. Charitable. I've been going on and on and on. Reminding people that charity actually begins at home. Be kind to one another. When I say your spouse, the wife needs to be kind to the husband. The husband needs to be kind and respectful to the wife as well. And we... We should have a beautiful relationship. We're not going to be the same. We're never the same. No two people have the same fingerprint or the iris. You know that. How do you think we're going to think exactly the same? 
you born same mother same father but your worlds apart part of your test is will you get along on common grounds we have to may allah make it the best ramadan Amen. inshallah we fulfill salah and we encourage the imams as well to read in the most beautiful way so that we can enjoy the act of worship i'm standing and i really feel this is an act of worship not like i'm on edge and i'm moving and I'm, i want to get down and get up and go down again and get up again you're not in a gym my brother <laughs> Honestly it's not a gym you don't need to oh whoa, whoa how many reps have you done today we did 35 reps come on your samsung watches or whatever apple watches that you have that track the movement of your heart and so on at the end of the tarawih and what not it might even give you how much you've lost in terms of calories and so on and you're excited no come on relax hey today we were we went for it no this is an act of worship you should be calm your heart should be at ease alladhina amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikrillah ala bi dhikrillah tatma'innu qulub true believers attain the calmness of the heart through the remembrance of allah The best remembrance of Allah is the Quran. But the other adhkar that you have, the praise of Allah as well. Because indeed it is only the remembrance of Allah that will calm your heart in the true sense. So we look forward to this month, we will reach out to people, we will try our best, we will be charitable, try to give a charity on a daily basis. Try to ensure that you but a little bit no matter what level you're on we have so many aid organizations around us today there was an announcement that abdullah aid was responsible to a great degree to make this happen may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them so aid organizations it's good for us to put a pound put 50p get the little children accustomed to it give them 20p and said you know what this thing put it in the tin from you so that as they grow older they develop a culture of giving We have the Ramadan challenge you might have heard of it where I've got it as well if you go to muftimank.com for example you find a Ramadan challenge you can subscribe to it what it will do every day as you're sleeping your charity is gone one pound perhaps 50p whatever the minimum is but the maximum is up to you the idea is to be able to do something good every day i want to give a charity every day i want to do salah every day i want to do quran every day i want to do this good deed every day i want to help every day etc etc so by the time the 30 days are done or 29 you're a transformed person transformed human being and every day we seek the forgiveness of allah and towards the end you start feeling the mercy of allah you know ramadan is amazing because the beginning of it mashallah the excitement of the first day second day third day and then it starts dwindling a little bit here and there because people start easing into ramadan right and then you have just at the right time the middle of ramadan comes in and then you start taking things a little bit more seriously hey it's two weeks up already we already on the downside you know and mashallah before you know it it's 20 20 everything comes to light and mashallah 21 the masjid start packing up again 22 as we ending subhanallah why is it when i come to this masjid i always give examples of football i see a lot of the youngsters you look like fit guys mashallah may allah bless you guys towards the end of the match is all the excitement everyone's wow 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 there's loud noise everything is happening and people are watching and so on some people say i don't even like to watch football besides the last 10 minutes then i know what's going on you know because we're on edge people get serious they come in they want to do a lot in ramadan the last 10 days we should do it from the beginning steady mashallah but the end of the race is what's important if you exit ramadan with the forgiveness of allah and with a better connection with allah that was a successful month of ramadan may allah grant us goodness may allah bless everyone and may allah almighty open our doors help us in our homes may allah help us in our sustenance those who don't have jobs may allah provide for you sustenance in a manner you'd never imagined those who are struggling with anxiety may allah calm you and soothe you and may allah grant you the reassurance 
And those who are struggling with any health matters, may Allah give you a cure and shifa. Those who've lost loved ones, may Allah grant them Jannatul Firdaus and may Allah gather all of us in the hereafter in a good condition, in the companionship of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those of you who are struggling in any way and those struggling across the globe in whatever way they may be struggling, our hearts and prayers reach out to them. Oh Allah, help them, grant them. Those who don't have homes, the homeless, may Allah provide for them shelter. Those who don't have food when we're sitting with so much, may Allah grant them the morsels of food or the food that they need. Those who don't have clothing, may Allah grant them clothing. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot to do. Allah has given us more than we need. Take from that which is over and above your need, reach out to others. Your life will change. May Allah help us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.